Okay. We're live. We are live. This is Trenny and C. We are back. I am back. This is our first like live stream since I've been... No, that's not true. That's not true at all. I was going to say since yeah. I've been back in Canada. We did one last week. But it's our first one that we've done together in a while. Yes. You're not even, he's not even paying attention. Just, Just looking to see if anything is um, happening here, if anyone's watching. Probably not. Right now it says... Oh, three watching. Okay. Okay, it's working. Whoa, it's working. Whoa, whoa, it's working. Is one of them you? Uh, probably. Yes. Four watching. Okay. Oh, great. Things are happening. I'll go in the comment section. Hey, no. Hey, everybody. That's us. There we go. That's us. Uh, we got Mark J. Goins oh, good. on the line. Good old Goins. We got seven in here now. Great. Seven people in for the impromptu Trini and C <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Love it. Uh, Moose76. Oh, Dave guys. M, our buddy Dave M. PJ fan. We got the package, PJ we got fan. The package we, we got the package. We opened it joke. up. We, we did get the joke. the joke. Yeah. We did get the joke. I was like, what's he mean? It's going to be like amusing, funny. Grain Wetski? Grain Wetski. <laughs> so good. We, um, um, we filmed the unboxing of the Four Roses and the Grain Wetski. So we did. Yeah, we filmed we, them as separate videos. We've had so. actually had a relatively productive weekend so far. We um, this in front of us, you may be thinking, why are there five glasses in front of these guys? Well, we did a challenge. A blend challenge. A blend challenge with other whiskey tubers and whiskey reviewers mm. um, who could make the best blend. Mm. I have a feeling we didn't get the memo because <laughs> all of these are scotch. Well, we, we're assuming. Presumably, yeah. Most likely. Um, ours was a Canadian blend. <laughs> but it's going to stand out. But it will be definitely out. the best. Yeah, yeah. It definitely is best. We've also got um, the Jubilant Jackrabbit. We've got Andrew Spurl. And we have Vorisan Soban. Hello, everybody. Hello, Vorisan, guys. that seems like a new name. Welcome to Trendy and And what about Jackrabbit? Jack. Uh, Jubilant Jackrabbit? That might be a new name, too. I don't recognize right. that personally, but welcome to Trendy and See. This is what we do. So um, what is <clears throat> everybody drinking on this Saturday night live? <laughs> what do you got going on, people? Um, Kentucky Derby is over. Oh, yeah. Or is it? I don't know. It's It happened today. Potentially still happening. The Kentucky Derby started at like 3.30 today. You don't have cable. I do not. No. Nope. So we didn't get to watch it. Um, nor so, have I ever cared about the Kentucky Derby ever in my life. So, you, <laughs> but it's a very bourbony type of event. Oh, I realize the bourbon <laughs> aspect of it is my favorite part. <laughs> right, right, right. You love bourbon. It's just the horse racing. The horses running anything. against each other. Like it's not really. They're it's not. Like, they're not doing anything that special. Is that a sport? Yeah. Like is is the jockey on the back the athlete or is it the horse? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yes. Good question. Nothing like a good jockey fight, though. Oh, I'd love to see one of those. Post race I would jockey. Dude, I would get cable for that. Fist of cuffs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. that was guaranteed after every horse race, they were going to punch each other. If out. it was a little bit more like hockey, where they were fighting as they're like <laughs> jumping from one horse to the other, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like it was like uh, battle horses. No, oh, <laughs> great. Like, jump off the horse, like knock the other guy off, and the guy. Now that's a derby. Yeah, yeah. That's a real derby. A dirty derby. Can we suggest that for next year? Yeah, well, hey, Kentucky Derby, get in touch with us. We want to be taken seriously. Yeah. They'll get um, in touch with us, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll be yeah. in touch shortly. Um, okay, who else we got here? We got some other friends. We got Triple Cap. What's oh. up, TC? Uh, we got Robert Robert Prettle. Is that a new is that a new uh, viewer? Sure. Welcome, yeah. Robert. You guys comment, though, too, because if you're new to the comment section... Yeah, sometimes or you're a long-time subscriber, first-time commenter. Right, or they've just changed their name or something. Yeah, true. They've changed their That's, handle. That could be uh, Jackass Pinto Beans or whatever. That's right. Frank M., uh, he's having some yep. Aberlauer Abenod. Eric Gilbert, our boy Eric Gilbert. Um, uh, Brian Campbell. They are athletes, yes. The jockeys are athletes. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you a jockey? <laughs> well, I'm we not don't mean to offend. <laughs> I'm not an athlete, so... We are a, you're a drinking athlete. I do take partake in the drinking Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what else we got? Uh, Jason Coates. Hey, everybody. Hey, it's Jason. pronounced A, everybody. Jason. Yeah. 
Um, so as Trini was mentioning earlier, we just finished filming a five flight blend challenge that was Swami from Malted in Montreal, Mark from Whiskey Whistle, uh, Jeremy, Sipper Social Club, Rob, Whiskey in the Six, and Vito. So, um, and then we sent our blend to those guys. Yeah. And uh, so, obviously, our blend is the best. We know that. Um, yeah, yeah. So, really, we're trying to choose second place. We already did the video. We cannot give away the results. We're not going to talk about what who's winning what or whatever. No, but got, you got to stay tuned for the video. Each channel is going to be doing their own video. And then in the end, I think... Jeremy's going to tally up um, who the grand champion the results, was. The final results. Yeah. Um, obviously us, but uh, we'll let yeah, them yeah. work out second place. And yeah. Else. First, yeah. Um, everyone else did a scotch. We did Canadian whiskey, so we might have missed the missed the memo. Yeah. Well, uh, they, if they're drinking it thinking it's a scotch, then yeah, they'd be weird. like, whoa, this is like the most unique blend ever. We're really going to mess them up. Yeah. Um, we don't know what the rules were. We just kind of did our thing. But we did some really good Canadian whiskey in there. So oh, it's a fantastic. Either way, they're gonna like it. They yeah. just might. It might not be following the rules. Look at that. No. Oh. No. Oh. No. 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 Close. Uh, uh, it's getting there. Uh. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. okay uh, we. I am personally going to start with the left over here. <laughs> Mark uh, J. Goins right. says Vito's is Canadian mist. Ah. Perfect. Delicious. Oh, that's what that is. Well, I'm drinking Vito's right now, and what I really do like about it is that it is relatively subdued compared to the others. Yeah. It does not smell or taste like there are ju – it's just being pounded with a peat bomb. With peat or um, – Sherry. No, or uh, cask strength. Right, right, right. You know, it's relatively – like it's probably in the <coughs> but, 43 to 45%. Yeah. Range. I was going to say more information, but then I was like, no, I might give it away. Um Nice. We also have very us mumblings. Uh, don't know that one. Very us mumblings. Are you new to commenting on Trini and C? If so, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have Z. Good old Z. That one in the middle or is Z. quite. <laughs> depending, yeah. Okay. Um, that one in the middle is quite dark. Yeah, this one came from um, Jeremy Sipper Social Club. So we don't know what's in there, but it tastes very, very sherry. Very sherry. It's uh, it's all in the color of that one too. So. Um, really good though. Every single one of these blends, we got to say, was really good. Yeah. So all the fellas, all the fellas did a really nice job. Um, but as we said, you know, we have Trini and C have our particular tastes and preferences. Yes. And the question when you're blending is always, what what does the person you're blending for want? What are yes. they looking for? So and people that know us mm -hmm. and we won't give too too much away because we're kind of gonna maybe we already some slowly of the things. are yeah. Yeah, yeah uh but generally you'll notice that we don't review a ton of peated whiskeys and it's not because we don't like them or anything like that it's because we try to save them for the end of the evening mm -hmm. and then sometimes the end of the evening is a little too messy to film yeah, anything anyways we have to delete those videos <laughs> the amount of times we film the best you know, like yeah. heat or whatever. We, we we did that one video like six times, and we just kept deleting it. Yeah, it's like they were just too drunk. We, we did it as the um as a shootout, as an eight bottle shootout so at the end of the night years. every time, and yeah. we just shit canned every single time, and we we're like, this is not presentable. No, and I think no. in at the least end we, we recognize that. In the end, we just were like, Lafroy Gate versus Lafroy Sixteen. Fine. Yeah, yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> we can't be bothered to do eight again because we're just. Well, just doesn't, we can't we can't finish it. The other side of that is like eight peated whiskeys, and they're like, they all just taste the same. Yeah, by then, uh, like who cares who wins? It's the same. But eight peated whiskeys is a lot of peat. It's a lot of whiskey in general for most people. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> eight whiskeys but will you drink, kill a lot of people. Yes, yeah, so you drink the eight, and then you drink four, and then you drink two. Right, yeah. so you end up with fourteen drinks. Yeah, which is um, just in the world of peat to us, it's not as. Uh, Enticing, I guess. We got some more of our buddies online here. Tim Dietrich is here. Hey, 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 Tim. Uh, we have the Malted Man Cave Keith. What's up, buddy? And we have our boy Eric Waite from California. So cool. um, lots of people in the house tonight. I'm glad that we could. We have 30 people watching right now for an impromptu. So thanks for tuning in. Can you pass me that shirt there? Which one? White. Are you getting up to get it? No. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Sorry about that. We both just left screen there. That's a that's a live streaming faux pas. Um, so anyway, we're just talking about the blending challenge. Yeah, we're just talking about the blending challenge that we did today. We just finished filming this video, and it was um, uh, Swami Malted Montreal's blend versus Mark Whiskey Whistle versus Sipper Social Club versus Whiskey in the Six versus Veto and versus us because uh, we sent our blend to them. So uh, we've had fun doing that. We also did. Um, we did an on location we did. video from the trailer from park. Beautiful Shawnigan Lake, British Columbia. Where your parents have a double lot on the, the water. The only double lot on the whole place. Yes, yeah, just on the water. We posted some pictures on Instagram today. Um, thank you all. Some of you check them out and give us some likes. And uh, it was sunny out today. We were sun tanning. My wife is out of town for two nights with the kids. I came up to Trenny's place and uh, we just had hashtag best Saturday ever today. We went to, uh, we went out for breakfast. Then we went to the trailer park and suntanned at the lakeside. And then we went to the brew pub. Then we went to um, Stillhead uh, Distillery. Mm -hmm. And then we came back and filmed the reviews. We have just been crushing it we've been crushing it just living the, <laughs> the dream um just a boys weekend just yeah, a great boys weekend the week the dream of <laughs> not having wives and children or work that's right <laughs> no work no dream. wives no children um I, I, love you honey if you're watching live of course of course uh i just tim dietrich said a second ago i've been here two minutes and i know this one is getting deleted in the morning <laughs> <laughs> I don't, well, we so we came back after uh, we finished Stillhead Distillery was our last kind of visit where we had three cocktails there and two samples, and then yeah. we also had a flight at the at, at the brewery. Yes, and before that we did a video at the trailer park. Yeah, and then we came back and we filmed a weeded Five bourbon videos. showdown, three Indian whiskeys, this blend video. I think we're in pretty good shape, aren't we? I think like this is some of the best shape I've seen us in. Well, we because I think we went a little harder last night than we were expecting. Yeah. Um, it's like we're trying to take it easy, and then you think about it, we haven't taken it most, easy. Most most normal humans would be like passed out by now yeah. from what we've had today. Um, PJ fan one seventy three says speedo speedo sunbathing. Uh, not quite speedos, but the shirts came off. Yeah. Not gonna lie, the shirts came off. And then Eric Gilbert says, "How do you tan with plaid on? <laughs> <laughs> Through the holes, you have yeah. to help do that." Well, do you know what you got to do? Get one of those mesh shirts, and then you got like, oh yeah, real. it those looks like nice. you're wearing plaid all the yeah. time. You get a little speckled. <laughs> That's great. Um, what? Okay, we've kind of asked what people are drinking, but I mean, this is early for us. Uh, Tim know? Dietrich says he's having one Weller one hundred and seven, oh, and nice. now he's on to Wiser's dissertation. Two Ooh, fantastic options. Wow. We got some. We did a video earlier today that had Weller 107 in it. So we've yeah. got we've got some of that, but we're still kind of sipping on these uh, blends that we got from the fellas from the other channels. Um, can I do some shameless self promotion? Here? I think you should. So you might notice that I'm wearing this shirt here that says "Listening Party." That is the name of the band that I play in. And, oh, and no, not all the songs are going to be as good as the Trinity and C theme song. They're really not. They're really not. <laughs> but if you are interested in seeing something that I've been personally doing, and is it's your like, personal it's, it's my baby, yeah. that uh, I've been doing this for about 15 years with my friend uh, Lindy. Mm -hmm. And we've toured all over the United States, and we've mm -hmm. toured all over Canada, and we've played a lot of shows and sold some albums and shirts and things like that. Um, so we are finally, after all this time, we have social media out there and it's because this guy, I is, did it all. He's doing it for last us. week. Yeah. He, so, did, he did more in three days than we did in 15 years. So <laughs> check out our YouTube channel. Hopefully go right now. And well, just, well, right for this. Right, right, right. But it's listening party. Yeah. And it's got this, uh, this is the guy. This, uh, is, this, yeah. is, this is like a little logo. You'll see it's yellow and it's a dancing guy. Yeah. So if you see that, click like, watch some of the, put on a playlist, listen to some of the songs, let us know what you think. Because 
it's uh, something that I've been very passionate about. Because you um, guys are actually, the whole motivation here is you're working on a new album. Yeah, so we're working on a new album the first time in like four, almost five years. And uh, so finally to have our music available for people, mm -hmm. it will be on iTunes and Spotify and Apple Music and all sorts of things. So that's my shameless plug right now. But you guys, like, I mean, um, you used to open for some big bands. You did some yep. big tours. Yep. But then life got in the way. Lindy had kids and, you know, like things just kind of slipped. But their big thing was MySpace. <laughs> Whoops, yeah. right? Like wow. they had all their music and all of their social media was on MySpace. Which I'm sure you know got deleted uh, like a couple weeks ago. Like oh. all MySpace. All deleted. MySpace is like yeah. essentially gone. Yeah. And uh, so you guys, we made you an Instagram, we made you a Twitter, we made you a YouTube channel, and then we put everything, as of the end of May, everything is going to be on Apple Music, Spotify, you know, yeah. uh, Amuse, like all the different streaming platforms yeah, you guys are on there. So, yeah. so uh, check it out. Let us know what you think. It's it's fun. It's something that I've if you're into music, you know what I mean. Like check it out. Um, you might find something that you're interested in, and you can just uh, you can watch the videos on YouTube for free. It's not even monetized yet, so watch them before there's any commercials on there. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so let's talk about whiskey. Yes, let's, let's get back to whiskey. whiskey. Um, so. The one that I found that was interesting, that was kind of the most different, was Whiskey Whistles. Whiskey, yeah, th that one opened up huge. Just grab whiskey, whiskey Whistles was, so Whiskey, so we had a few, so Swami did something with some peat in it, Rob did something with a little bit less peat in it, and Vito did something with some mild peat in it. So we had three peated ones, and then we had Jeremy did a blend that was clearly sherried, a bit of a sherry bomb, and you can tell like by the color even that it was sherry cast. And then Mark had one that was either bourbon cast or not scotch at all, possibly. Like I thought like this could be like a Cavalan single malt, or it could be like a Paul John or something. It, it was much more um Mark's was much more tropical. So I'm just gonna taste Mark's again here. Uh Eric Waite says, I can't find the YouTube channel. Again, it's called Listening Party. What you got to do, though, is type in, um, and you can type it in here. Like head here. underwater. Listening Party Pacina. Okay. Listening Party. And then Pacina. Pacina. And if you do that, then you'll at least find that video, and then you can use that to um to click to the channel of course yeah yeah so that's kind of like uh that's a good song to start with maybe yeah, so there's pacina another one that will get you there is if you put like listening party kissing booth maybe you could type that in kissing too. booth listening party kissing booth and then head underwater would do it too but listening party kissing booth. party kissing booth it's not the band from milwaukee those guys suck or there's another band called listening party same with but we had the name first. Or it's another song. So uh, two months in <clears throat> Those ones will get you there. The other ones probably might not. Because they haven't had much views yet. There we go. Yeah. Just created, so there we yeah, go. Yeah, we just just created the channel and just basically there's um the first thing when you go in there is like a four song hit list. Those are like and it's like it's like indie rock kind of stuff, right? So um, Andrew Spurl does say I found a band from Milwaukee called Listening Party. Not you? No, no, no. no. They're terrible. <laughs> um. Anyway, and then somebody said something quite nice. Where is it here? Uh, Malted Man Cave said, "Trenny, you've been hitting the gym. Guns looking good. <laughs> no, no, the shirt's just way too tight on me." <laughs> It's like Lululemon pants, how they like pull everything in and like yeah. make it look good, even and then and then the girl takes them off and it's like, <laughs> no, I don't. That probably doesn't happen. They're all fantastic. They're all lovely ladies. Yeah, yeah. Trini was in the village. People, yeah, that was the uh, the second cop. Well, we got um, we got whiskey in the six here. We got malted in Montreal. Our boy Killa Jolt is here, guys. Yes, if you're just joining. We just finished filming the sample night. Uh, we had Swami's Whiskey here, Whiskey Whistle, um, Sipper Social Club, 
Rob's Whiskey in the Six, and Vito's, uh, Vito's Whiskey. So we have not given away the results. The results will be coming on an upcoming Thursday night uh, video. Triple Cap's wondering if we're drinking whiskey tonight. <laughs> we're just talking shit the whole time. <laughs> So we've mostly. done we've done some drinking. Um, I'm gonna try Jeremy's again. Yeah, and I'm gonna actually try Swami's. So Jeremy had the peat bomb, and Jeremy had the or I'm sorry, the sherry bomb. Sherry my bomb. Apologies, apologies. Yeah, um, Swami had the peat bomb here. Swami's it's, one. I said like it was very. It was like that that dirty blacksmith smoke. Too. Yeah, like, well, it's, it's it, like, which is good. It's, it's good, but it's it's that very fuely smoke. It's more subtle on the nose, and then you get into the flavor. Whoa. It like takes over your brain. And then you have it also tastes like there's a higher strength alcohol in there. And Vito created something that was mildly peated. Overall, just very mild. Yeah. Um, a nice, a nice sessionable um whiskey. Uh, a little bit lighter than the other guys. There's clearly some cask strength influence in the rest of these uh batches, and his was a lot uh, a lot softer, so these guys all kind of were like, they went for the like, blow your head off kind of like, big, big bold flavors, very rich. They wanted to catch our attention, which they did. And ro since Rob and Swami are watching right now, uh, did we miss the note we weren't supposed to use Canadian whiskey? <laughs> was it supposed to be scotch only? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was open to whatever you wanted, but we were clearly the only people that chose something other than scotch, so. Um, so Rob's here, Rob's just, it just smells expensive, Rob. It smells rather expensive. It's actually, that was the one that for myself, it's kind of like, it was, the nose was so closed off in the beginning. And then as you kind of like let it open up and then actually finally taste it, there's there's something going on. There. I want to say that it tastes a little bit Lafroigy to me. Uh, what's Lafroigy? That's a term. What Still subtle on the nose, I find. We got Dan E is here. Uh, just want to shout out anybody else that we might have missed. Jason Voorhees, what's up, buddy? Woo woo. Um, I think we've uh, whiskey scotch D. What's up, fellas? Have a great evening. Hey, thank you for joining. Like I said, this was an impromptu. Uh, we have forty-one people watching. We uh, had a great day today. <laughs> we did a lot of things. We went to the brew pub. We went to the lake and sunned ourselves uh, <laughs> like two beached whales. <laughs> two beached whales, two extra beached white. Whales. I have like four. I was just in Southeast Asia, and for being there, like I'm not that brown. Yeah, really. it looks like you weren't there. It's like as soon as I got on the plane, the air conditioning just like just melted your the, tan. Yeah, <laughs> sucked all the tan off me. So yeah, we went to the brew pub, and then we went to um, Stillhead Distillery. Uh, we had breakfast out we went to the food truck we hit up a food truck oh, today. great food there uh just jake's food truck fantastic and uh then we filmed a shit ton of videos and uh, and we're doing pretty good i think we still have to go for dinner and like right now it's eight o'clock here it's five after eight uh it's gonna be a late dinner yeah like especially if we keep catch going. the shuttle yep uh this place it's the craig street brew pub they have a shuttle it'll come and pick you up and take you home Fucking awesome! And for minimal money, like you just tip the guy. You just tip, tip the guy, him. and he's uh, so chill and so oh, cool. He's so cool. Yeah, good, a good, uh, good old boy uh, with his has a big beard and big everything. Great beard and great cool. ponytail, and yeah. Uh, which one haven't I had? I haven't had um, Swami's here. Mm. The more I kind of taste the um, marks. marks. It just, the flavor evolves on that one a lot. They're all tasting better now than they were like 30 minutes ago. But they've also been sitting out for quite a while. Like they've been in little, um, they've, those little like bottles, little, little bottles for, trapped, condensed for, yeah, so. for weeks on end. These bottles were all sitting here, uh, in your mailbox while you were away, yeah. just waiting just for your return and rotting without us. The cool thing was you opened the mailbox when you got back and it just was like spilling out with packages from yeah. people, which is like always so much fun. Like always cool. It doesn't we, happen often. Well, it seems like it doesn't happen often to get it all at once. Yeah. It's happening more often now. And you know what? We got some really awesome, um, gifts from people over the last couple of weeks that people are so generous. Such a great group of people. Like we try and give back, but the subscribers, like you guys give to us and that's what keeps us going here. It's so much fun to interact with people and like 
you get we get a package in the mail we try and send you a package in the mail you know we try and do some raffles i mean there's five thousand subscribers we can't send a package to every person but um that's why we do the raffles and try and have some fun with it and you know you get something in the mail and you, you see our name on it and hopefully you're like oh yeah there's something good in here um so yeah i'm gonna respond to something just through text i won't say it online or on whatever this is called live must be intriguing. I'm sure everyone else will get to read it anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the answer is yes, Brian Campbell. Yes. I don't know what he's even talking about. Um, I'm going to go back to... I'm going to go back to Jeremy's one. You know, so these guys were all kind enough. They sent us about two ounces worth of samples. <laughs> There's two of us. And then we. I sent chintzily like very very frugally i sent one ounce to each of them but it was like i was thinking about weight for shipping yeah of course, you know of course. And like you got to ship five packages out thankfully we were able to send vetoes robs and jeremy's all to the same address so yeah that's that good. good um that saved on shipping uh but then you know like swami's swami's on the other side of the continent you know you guys you, you know and he spent a few bucks to send his to us too like it's it, it goes both ways but you know, I was like, oh, one ounce, one guy. Hopefully, hopefully you can get a review out of that. And we've been sharing these ones. Yeah. So, yeah. Trending C is fiscally responsible. We try to stay not too far into the red. Yes. <laughs> we're in the red at any Fisc given moment. Fiscally conservative. <laughs> really. We're in the red at any given moment, but yeah. we try not to get too deep. Yeah. Like it's my wife will just the channel gets shut down. Oh yeah. <laughs> if we ever get shut down, it has nothing to do with us. Yeah. yeah. With if life. all of a sudden it doesn't exist, my wife just fucking, she <laughs> ended it. We're too far in the red. Yeah. 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 It's like, I used to have um clash of clans on my phone. Yeah. And it was like, it was basically <laughs> like, listen, you delete that app now or just go and find a new place to live. <laughs> so I, I had to delete clash of clans. I'm, so I'm a grown man. I don't need video games on my cell phone either. So, well, then there's the other angle is if maybe you'll be seeing way more live content from us if you <laughs> take the fan. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, C is available every night. Yeah. C. He's C a little depressed though. His new channel. He's, C's couch. <laughs> yes. Every every video from my couch. Yeah. Um. Hopefully that doesn't happen. No. I, think, I think we're on good terms. You're oh, yeah. she's getting a couple of days away from me. That uh, I'm recharge on recharge her battery. Too, I think. Yeah. Just, you know. Well, it positive. helps you bring her a bottle of wine when you come over. Yes, usually, usually and yes. she feels the love, and uh, yes. you know it's good. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta know the hand that feeds you. Mm -hmm. You don't bite, you don't bite the hand, right? Never. Or the hand this... might just bitch slap you. Right? <laughs> well, the other thing is, is like this probably doesn't seem like we're hanging out to her because I'm not in the her space. No, for this, this is good you know, for her. Yeah, exactly. she doesn't have to see your face. Exactly, it's perfect. You know, it's like probably what most relationships I've been in would. Could stand Actually, your most strained relationship is with my son. <laughs> <laughs> my son is almost, he's turning four in a couple of months. And I said, I told him the other day, I said, Uncle Trent's coming over. And then he goes, oh. And I was like, oh, why? What's wrong? And then he goes, Uncle Trent makes my bathroom stinky. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, like, get down on his level on my knee and, like, have, a, like, a heart to heart with him. Like, hey, I know you don't like me using... Your bathroom, <laughs> even though it's been my even bathroom though I was for there for years, motherfucker. <laughs> Anyways, um, and, and it's like, is it okay? Can I should I go in the other bathroom then? He's like, yeah, yeah. And we like shook on it and high five. Things have been better since then. It's been good. It's yeah, been, things are good cool. now. It's been cool. So, you yeah. know, you gotta be careful, right? You, know, yeah, you gotta know who's running, running, who's running the show. And it's definitely him. It's not you. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um. Okay. What do we got here? Yeah, this video is definitely getting deleted. Uh, 47 people are on. Hopefully nice. they great. enjoyed that pooping story. And oh, yeah. uh, Nothing like a good poo story. We're talking about... I heard some great poo stories today. Yeah. So. <laughs> but anyways, we'll get yeah, that. We so, get... That's another channel. Yeah. <laughs> that's our channel. Trendy and C poos. <laughs> you poo. You poo. Um, so yeah, we're talking about the blends that, uh, that we enjoyed today. And we're talking about Listening Party, the band. The song Pachina, P A C H I N A. Listening party, Pachina, P A C H I N A. Check it out. YouTube. Subscribe. Check it out. Uh, Trendy's band. Uh, they're back in action after about a 12 year hiatus. So you want to support them. Absolutely. Yeah. They need all the support. The, the dream is alive and well again. The problem was they were on. Um, 
what was it called? MySpace. MySpace. And then they had, so I went in and cleaned up all the social media and made all the social media for them. And I'm like, oh, you guys must have a Facebook group, right? So I go on there. The Facebook group has 12 people on it. <laughs> and four of those people are in the band. Or so administrators like, or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you guys have eight fans and one of them's your mom. Okay. Yeah. So um, you have seven. So anyway. For a band that's like did relatively well, you sure don't have a lot of people. Actually, a truly legit band. Actually, you can go on um, Bandcamp. There's a there's a website called Bandcamp, and it's a streaming. That's a pay service, though. So you don't. We're not trying to make you spend money here or whatever. But if you want to get all the music, you can get it off of Bandcamp. Um, or, or at you the can, end of the month, hmm? at the end of the month, you can get it from like yeah, Apple, Apple and, and Spotify and all that kind of stuff. Or um, you can go to the YouTube channel and you can watch the uh, watch the music videos for free but the music videos are just the album covers and then it plays music. but anyway yeah moving on <laughs> we're live streaming to promote this band tonight pretty much yeah um what else do we want to drink here tonight i'm kind of like i feel like kind of over this pour, like let's pour these blends back yeah let's do a bad else. idea oh how many subscribers did we have like we had nine so we have 11 oh now. wow we've got two more thank you, you guys, guys are really coming out thank you for showing your support both of you, and uh, the band is clearly. Oh, Moose seventy six comments saying, "Is this you, Trenny?" And then uh, Jason Keats also subscribed. So I'm gonna respond to that. That's like the first one. Hey, yeah, it's me. Okay, so we're pouring these blends back, and we're gonna move on to something else. Um, something else that I think we should pull out the awesome bottle that we got from PJ Fan. Oh let's yeah, pull, let's yeah. pull that one. Up. Cool. Oh, I just poured half of that shit on the table. Oh. Here, I'll I'll pass it to you, and you can talk about it while I'm. Oh God, for fuck's sake! Just broke a bottle of Weller 107. Does anyone like that? There you go. Okay, I'm gonna kind of keep this secret. Like, this here was sent to us by PJ Fan 173, who is online right who is now. Online. Thank you so much. This is like one of the coolest things we've ever Super seen. Super fun. It was um, like he did say, he prefaced it and said, I'm sending you something interesting if I can get my hands on it. And we we're like, I don't and, know what that means. It's even maybe comical, which yeah. I think is a nice thing to, because whiskey has, you know, in the years past been something somewhat of a snobbish, pretentious, pretentious kind of a snootery to it. But um, I think that people are sending us things with. Like jokes in mind, really, which is really cool because it's it fits our yeah. our, our channel's like uh, mission statement. You right. know? Um, so, anyways, this guy here, I don't know if you recognize this guy. He's kind of three D. He has his own whiskey company. Yeah. So this is, I'm sure, he's gonna, this company of Strathcona Spirits will get sued like crazy soon enough. <laughs> but that is uh, a young buck named uh, Wayne Gretzky, or as he's known by Strathcona Spirits. At the back there, you can see kind of near the top, Grain Wetski. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Genius. And what's so cool about this is this is bottled 665, bottled at 44.5%, one-year-old Edmonton wheat whiskey. And then in brackets, unaged. I don't know what that I means. Don't, that's that the one statement sense. that boggles my mind. But it's aged six months in Virginia oak, white oak, uh, quarter casks. And then six months in X Rye Hogshead from South Tennessee. It says caramel, berry, spicy, and hot. Those last two tasting notes might not be something you want to put on the label, but whatever. Okay, I gotta say, Whiskey Whistle's fucking bottle is like mind bog. It's like childproof or something. Yeah, I know. I, I could not open it for my life because it's like the threads don't line up or something. Anyway, got it. Okay, so carry on. <laughs> Figured it out. Okay. Um, so, but this is cool because it almost looks like you got to go out and buy 3D glasses to look at uh, Wayne right there. Uh, green, right, green, green, <laughs> green wet seed. Um, so this is kind of cool. We have uh, been pretty vocal about our disdain for distilleries that put out really young whiskey and they at an exorbitant at prices. really really expensive prices, and they kind of get that one shot to make an impression on people and. Uh, it's just it's you just never get a second chance to make a first impression. I think was the gum commercial saying. What, what was that? Commercial? That was like double mint or some shit. Ah, okay. Double the pleasure. 
No, uh, maybe it was a different one. But anyway, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, which is true yeah. with whiskey. Very much people so. will, there's so many options out there. If you make a shitty first impression, people will move on to the next whiskey. Absolutely. And well, the other thing is like, Chuck it up. Chuck, chuck, chuck. Um, rock up. Um, I think though, having said that, one thing that is also amazing about whiskey is the fact that, let's hypothetically say, you try Glen Fittick, twelve-year-old, and you're not super into it. It does not mean that other expressions of Glen Fittick are going to be treat you the same way. Like we just recently unboxed the uh, Glen Fittick Project XX, or there was the Solera Vat, or different things that you know it's very, very, very delicious stuff. As long as you're willing to understand that whiskey isn't just the one dimension you know of what they release initially like so let's hope we have tried this we're going to release this i'm not going to give you too much information on what we thought of it but let's just hope that this ages well over the next five six years even three years to make it legal <laughs> mm -hmm. let's make this a, a legal whiskey um but it I will all I will say is it does have enough potential mm -hmm. that uh, it's it's interesting. I, I really kind of think Wayne Gretzky's face won't be on it for, for yeah. very long, and they might call it something totally different. It could still be called Grain Wet's guy. Yeah, <laughs> or maybe they can turn this into the Train Sea Batch. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, what do you want? What do you want to drink while we're since we're? Oh, you know what we should have. PJ Fan says it was forty-five dollars. Whoa! <clears throat> Classic uh, Numic uh, distillery style. You know, like that's that's forty-five bucks for this is. Uh, I mean, it's worth the laugh, but you know, that's a lot of money. Uh, here's something that was thirty-nine dollars. This is the bottle that we're giving away to uh, our patrons next. This is a bottle of Bareface. Canadian whiskey, which we unboxed and filmed last night. So pop it up and give you a little. Brian Campbell says, I like the song Half My Worries and Two Months in Langley. Thank you, Brian. Awesome. <clears throat> oh, Z says, Oh boy, dark Glencairn glasses are out. Shit's going to get real tonight. <laughs> then Whiskey S says, Yo, what's up, Training C? Can't even see these. I might have to put the um, put our stage lighting. Oh, on. and uh, we just got the call from uh, Tim Dietrich just saying bareface, and uh, that and Andrew Spiro says I got the bareface this week. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, we do agree. Um, Alan Hunt, if you take Wayne's face off the bottle, but leave the outline of his head, it looks a bit risky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How's the lighting now? How do you look? Oh my god. Whew. Shit really did just get real. <laughs> pretty big shadows going on here, but uh, maybe I'll yeah. Maybe point it up or something. How's that? That's much better. Okay. Now people are gonna actually see what the hell's going on here. ADHD oh! fishing says, Are you down with training C? <laughs> yeah, you know me. <laughs> That's one of your songs. That's one of listening party songs. Sure. Yeah. It will be. Okay, uh, so okay. this one, here was my I'm gonna say my tasting note. I'm gonna give it away. Yeah. No? Yeah, I'll sure. No. My main tasting note from this was blown out birthday candles. Yeah, it's true though. There is because there's like this slight kind of char, slight kind of smoky. See, smokiness to it. Malton Montreal says, man, Trini, you got a red face. Yeah, see, we, we hit up the, uh, we got sun today. Oh, got yeah, that's sun. true. We went to the trailer park today, got some sun. Yeah. Sat out. Right. Actually, I can feel but, a little crispy. When we say the trailer park, it makes it sound like so shitty. But you can see the pictures on our Instagram, and you'll see, like, it is it's beautiful. a waterfront, um, lakefront trailer. Your parents have a double lot on the water. We are lucky, lucky people to have access to something like that. Absolutely. One yeah. of the most beautiful spots. 
probably in Definitely the world. On, on that lake. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, honestly, like, what more could you ask for? No, totally. Like, it's, and it was quiet there today. There's nobody You're there. right. The sun I, was I did, out. did get some sun. It's everywhere. This is usually the color of my skin. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely got a little bit of sun today. Um, so this bare face is really, really, really nice. It is really nice. It's seven-year-old uh, Canadian whiskey that is... Um, seven years in ex bourbon barrels uh, on the shores of the Georgian Bay, Ontario, then finished in the Okanagan Valley, BC, where we live. Well, we don't live in the Okanagan Valley, but we live in BC, in tight grain French oak red wine barrels for dried fruit and chestnut notes. Our understanding is that it's finished at Mission Hill Vineyard, or at least the barrels are from Mission Hill uh, Vineyard, which it, I've been to that to that vineyard in the Okanagan, yeah. and they have their barrels age in an underground cave underneath a pyramid, isn't it? No, that's, that's, a, no, that's a different oh, one. Okay. That's a pyramid winery. Um, and it, they no, but they age in like this giant like catacomb cave underneath their castle like Jeez. fucking vineyard. It is a huge. Um, they have like an amphitheater outdoor. Wow. Like it is unbelievable. And then you go down, you go down into this cave at Mission Hill, and they have like a like it looks like an old timey jail cell. It right. has like barred doors and stuff, and you can see in there. And they have these like racks with with bottles in there, and they're like these dusty <laughs> cobweb bottles and. It's it's so it is told that those are all like incredibly aged fine wines that what they do is like every once in a while they pop open one of those ones and they taste them against their own to see how their stuff is aging is so fucking cool. So it's like dripping water. ADHD fishing says, damn, Nicholas Cage, master distiller or what? <laughs> National treasure. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's very Indiana Jones, very very national treasure kind of shit, but um, Mission Hill is so cool, um, and it's on an amazing piece of property that like o overlooks like Okanagan Lake, like oh. yeah, amazing. That that part of uh, very British cool. Columbia is really beautiful too. Yeah, the Okanagan uh, and specifically the lake there is uh, really awesome. My sister actually lives um, in the Okanagan. Yeah. So, but yeah, so this is finished there in the red wine barrels from the winery and you can taste that influence totally. and it's so good like i don't necessarily think that red wine works perfectly with all whiskeys no it's totally. not a like, I, like i didn't think it was good on uh the wayne gretzky's one that's right right yeah and that you know what and the wayne gretzky one here's the interesting thing is that one of Rob whiskey in the six tasting notes was that it was too waxy. Yeah, and that's similar, you know, with the, yeah, but these, the candle these, wax thing. Like maybe these guys didn't age it as long in there. Like mm -hmm. maybe Wayne overdid it or something, right? Right. Very interesting. Yes, it is very interesting. The other thing that's kind of cool about this bear face <laughs> is if you get angry drunk now, mm -hmm. you can say you got bear faced. Yeah, it's a new thing. Yeah, you're getting bear faced. So has, hashtag uh, angry bear face. <laughs> Um, Malden Montreal says, mm, I'm liking this JD hundred proof. Um, are you talking about the travel exclusive, um, ball and bond Jack Daniels? Sounds, talking about? sounds like it. We've had that. We like it. Uh, D Silve two says bear face. That's so open for funny jokes. Yes, it is. Yeah. There are, there is a bear community. So, um, there is, yes. but yeah, uh, I McLaren, Mama and Sis watching. Oh wow! Good. Oh, there you go. I, I think it's an L. Oh, yeah. Her too. Hi guys, Mom and Hi, Sis. Mom. It's great. We better mind our mind our manners here. Mom's on the line. Yeah. Oh, uh, Z uh, says forgot to mention bought Ledeg ten a uh, few days ago based on Trenny's review. Loving it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we can be of so actual good. service. Yeah. You know, that's great. Yeah. We, we, the one thing that we pride ourselves on is honesty. Like, we will tell you if we think something's shitty, we're going to straight up say, like, some channels won't review a bottle that's shitty because Which I think is a disservice in a way because 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I I, I understand because you that don't want mindset. someone else to stumble onto that same bottle and be like, oh, I hope this is good, and spend their money, and then it's shitty when you could have told them that it's shitty. Um, and it is just our opinion, but at the same time, when we find something we don't like, we are going to tell people our thoughts so that they know if if they um, have a similar palate or they trust our our opinion or they whatever, then they'll know, hey, stay away from it. So um, not that everyone needs to do that, but that's that's a service we offer. Let's just say that. We'll always tell you our honest opinion if something is not tasty. <laughs> PJ Fan 173 says, you guys have cost me a fortune with all the <laughs> bottles I bought after a review. <laughs> well, well, thank you for sharing some of that uh, fortune with us because he sent us a lovely four roses as well. So or it says, if a bottle makes you have bare face, don't buy it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, we, we do not approve of angry drunkenness. Yes, no. Trendy and C not. is not about angry drunkenness. No, Trendy no. and C is about having a good time, and we always we always do. PJ love, fan, love, thank peace you. and crappiness. That's right. Uh, PJ fan, thank you. Uh, we did unbox this last night. You'll be getting a fuck yeah song uh, written in your name yeah. uh, very shortly. So it's, it's thank you. It's, the least we could do. That's right. And the most. Quite literally. Like and also the most we can do. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Bareface is really good. We think it's really, pretty interesting stuff. Um, I'm sipping on this and taking my time with it, and it's really, really nice that um, the Hungarian oak must have right. an influence on this guy. Yeah, because it know? says eight, you know, it's like, uh, what, what's their saying about um, around the world or whatever? They said yeah, it's about... like whiskey from around the world. Also, it's aged seven years, so some of those uh, char kind of, as you said, birthday candle, yeah. freshly blowing up birthday candle, yeah. must have something to, to do with the age and the different influences of the oak. And it seems Delicious stuff. to also be a red wine th a red wine thing. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's aged in three different types. It's the ex-bourbon, the wine, and the Hungarian oak, yeah. which Hungarian oak is also used by Wisers on the Pike Creek 21-year-old, the most recent one. Right, which was way more of a wet wood kind of a flavor compared to something like this. Yeah. 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 Um, so no, it's interesting. And then we were also kind of saying about the whole chestnut thing. Um, chestnut notes. Chestnut, one of our favorite beers is actually that, um, the chestnut ale. Yeah, from Whistler uh, Brewing Company. From Whistler Brewing Company. And that's a fantastic beer. And chestnut goes really well with basically liquor. It seems to yeah, be a it good. Seems to be a good combo. And I was watching a Ralphie and video. an open fire. It seems to go well yes. with yeah. roasting, roasting on an open fire. But I was watching a Ralphie video, and he was saying that chestnut is an alternative wood Ooh. For, that can be used as opposed to um, like oh, oak. Oh. Yeah, for casks, you can yeah, use yeah. chestnut casks, which is you got to be a really because, nice influence because some of those. Uh, uh, different woods are like poisonous to humans. So people that yeah, like just I don't think, think they just, can like, like want to like a everything. cedar cast. Yeah, right? maybe not. Yeah, it's hard to know. Even though I like sitting in a cedar sauna, so maybe that's something. I don't know. Kenneth, Kenneth Cherry would anyone try grape jelly jars for finish? <laughs> grape jelly jar? It's an idea. Yeah, it's an idea. It's great. We just had some. We had some blackberry, what was it today? Blackberry today vodka. Today was, was a blackberry vodka, but we also had the uh, Kirsch. The cherry. Cherry Kirsch. Kirsch, which was like a kind of like it a brandy. It was a brandy, yeah. yeah. And uh, what was the other? We had, was it a cherry brandy? Yeah, that yeah. was the Kirsch. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm cool, 6941 says, how Canadian are you guys? We're a super fucking Canadian. <laughs> I guess so. But actually, we're kind of like, from the forgotten area of Canada in a way because we're like tucked way out west and the rest of Canada doesn't really notice. Frank M it's fine. <laughs> it's great by us. Frank M says, You guys are the best level of drunk. You're still in control, but with awesome exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll take yeah, that. We'll take we've it. got the enthusiasm. Um, I think it's because we got way too drunk last night that we can't like completely get Annihilated right now, but it, feels, it is a feels like it. It know? is a two day boys weekend, so we couldn't just let off the gas tonight. No, we had, no, we had, going. We had videos to do. Yeah, we had bit. It was business today, big yeah. time. Even though we drank most of the day, like for pleasure. 
Uh, we also have Ankur Mohan on the line. Okay. Uh, and he says, I love Ralphie. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, we all do. Whiskey Ace is on the line here. Loch Ness is on the line. Whiskey hey, Sneerson. Sneerson. I love that name. Uh, Whiskey Sneerson says, hey, everyone. Bareface is really good stuff. Thanks for the recommendation, Trini and C. You're very welcome. Anytime. Uh, I think we're caught up. I hope we haven't missed anybody. Or Christine Deems. Did we shout out oh, Christine? Christine. Mose Chun. Moses on the line. Moses is always giving us some uh, some retweets and some likes and stuff like that. Thank you, Moses. And uh, I, I always read this as Moose Chun. Don't I? No, there's Moose another Moose, Moose yeah, yeah, Seventy Six. Yeah. Moose Seventy Six. Moses Chun, right? Uh, so yeah, lots of buddies. I think we already said <laughs> Kill Adult. Um, Kill Adult's on there. Loch Ness just joined us recently. Yeah, but we got forty eight watching. That's Whoa. cool. It's great for an impromptu. I guess it does pay to go a little earlier than our usual like one in the morning start. Bruce Ross. Bruce Ross. I don't know if I recognize that name. Bruce, are you first time subscriber? commenter? First time commenter. <laughs> Long time listener, first time commenter. Yeah. First time caller. Caller. Yeah, yeah right. Um, so yeah, we were talking a lot tonight about just the stuff that we got up to. We don't have a theme for tonight's video because it, it is impromptu. Yes. We're just kind of regurgitating the same things that we already talked about earlier. <laughs> My wife's out of town with the kids so it's boys weekend last night we had the band here oh, we had yeah. a listening party here and uh we talked a lot of music we had a shit ton of whiskey lots of whiskey um we shared with our buddies and we also did four unboxing videos that's successful yeah, yeah so we started the night last night we started the night with unboxing videos then the band came over then we went out for dinner we got the shuttle uh, we got the shuttle to the Craig Street Brew Pub. We got the shuttle back. We drank more whiskey, talked more music. Yes. Trendy and C, we've always said, is just a vehicle for us to promote our music career. Yes. Now it's coming true. Now it's kind of coming true, um, but uh, the music's a little more serious than the things that we've done if, on Trendy and C. Yeah, on Trendy and C. We do still have three or four legit whiskey music songs that we have oh, they're so good. That we've written. And oh, yeah. we are yet to produce. Uh, coming soon by 2020. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have them up by 2020, maybe. This was probably actually the weekend to get that shit done. And we didn't yeah, yeah, no, we didn't do any of that. Um, sure. But yeah, we've, you know, our, our priorities have shifted. You know, we're trying to trying to get some shit oh. done here. Most Chun. Most a, Chun. A $10 super chat. Thank you, Thank buddy. Thank you. What, uh, what shall we drink in your honor, most? Yeah, I, I just, finished, just finished this bare face. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could go for more, I suppose, but Mo's, um, Mo's we have, um, what do we have here? We have a bunch of Indian whiskey. We have a bunch of Weller. Kill Joel just said, uh, I linked your listening party to your discord, by the way. Fantastic. We don't right. even know what we're doing with that discord. Kill Joel. I sent you a message on discord today and I was like, is this chat live? Is anything happening here? I don't know. Cause like, thank you. Kill Joel, by the way, Kill Joel set up our discord account. And I just, I haven't had a chance to actually know what, to, like, I got to do a YouTube, I got to watch a YouTube video to figure out how to work it because I just don't have it. I, I think I'm supposed to send a link out to people. Kill a jolt. If you can do that, if you know how to do that, I think you're an administrator on there or whatever. If you can send a link to people, that'd be cool. Because I don't know. Like, Loch Ness says over 15, 50 people watching on a Saturday night. People must be really bored. <laughs> People will watch anything. That's what Trendy and Z has proven. Moz Chen says, just make sure it's something good. Okay. Oh, and then Mo Moose76, binge listening, binge listening party YouTube after this. That's right. Totally. That's right. Totally. Um, let's, okay, let's get something so good. Let's change these glasses out. Yeah. Something good. Something good. Should we do oh, the Glenfiddich Double X? Oh, sure. That's good. Something good. There we go. So we were, uh, again, gifted this wonderful bottle by Christine Lowe's. Um, this is the, I'm sure you guys have seen this around, but this is the Glenfiddich Project XX. Uh, pretty interesting stuff. It's definitely um, a step above, you know, regular Glenfiddich, which is nice. I do like the packaging and everything. It looks really classy. Um, Loch Ness just gave us a $9.99 super chat, and he says 
Here's to a boys weekend. Cheers. Thank you. You know what? That actually will that actually will pay for our shuttle ride. Oh, that's great. Thank you, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> we might need a shuttle ride home, just putting it out there. <laughs> but that's that's just that's, that's just, just begging. There. Yeah. You don't want to well, beg. Don't want to beg. We um we did manage to source a uh, food quigs cab ride home oh, through yeah. Super Chat <laughs> after Whiskey Fest. We deleted the video off the channel because we were just so drunk. And usually these videos are like when we do an impromptu live, it's an Easter egg. Like if you find it and you get to watch it, that's great. But they're going to be gone tomorrow. So what happened was Food Quig came over after Whiskey Fest and we had been filming before Whiskey Fest. And then we went to Whiskey Fest. And then we did like a fucking two and a half hour live stream with Food Quig after Whiskey Fest. And he was like, oh, I got to get a cab out of here. I got no money or whatever. I don't really remember, but we're like, super chat us, give us a kid, let's get food quick home. And people sent us like 35 bucks worth of super chats to get food quick home. It was amazing. And then I gave food quick a $20 hey, bill. Apparently people remember because we're getting lots of comments saying like that uh, food quick video was amazing. Oh, uh, I, th I think it might it was... still be on his channel. Oh, uh, yeah. Then there, no, we quick didn't take his own cab home. No, Quig, not. as a no, he got a cab. It wasn't he didn't drive home in in his cab. That prank on Food Quig was awesome. Oh, because we um he went to the bathroom and then we like filled up shots and ours were filled with water or something. And oh made, yeah, yeah, like I think we did it a couple times to him. Yeah, yeah, we he, made him he got stuff. so shit faced. I felt kind of bad about that. We actually. were ass. We were kind of assholes. Yeah, we were kind of like being pricks, but like, but no way to fun. Shot, shot, <laughs> shot, 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 shot. It was fun, but I mean, it's just kind of a dick move to like make him do a shot when yeah, we yeah. didn't do it. But we used to do that to our buddy, and we used to fill his stuff up, and then we'd put iced tea in ours. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> anyway, then it was like this, like, oh, yeah, so it's very dark, isn't it? Yeah. And then he'd be like, and, and then, then he'd be like, shoot it. And he's yeah. like, how come you guys aren't very drunk? We're like, oh, you're just lightweight. Yeah. You're fucking yeah. lightweight. That's your problem. Okay. On the nose, I'm okay. It is very much that Glenfiddich kind of like mm -hmm. uh, green apple, mm -hmm. pears, figs, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of vanilla. But kind of bigger and bolder than say a little the 12. Bit, yeah, exactly. There's a little bit more going on there. The cool thing about this Project Double X is that they have these like 20 brilliant whiskey mimes or whatever come and select casks. And uh, then they essentially blended them all together. And kind of like, so the story goes, like there was no rules, like you could pick whatever cask you wanted. And so there's, you know, supposedly like very, you know, old ages uh, in here, like some very old casks in here and maybe some- Sorry to interrupt, sorry, go ahead. Doug Chrisope. Oh yeah, right? Doug Chrisope. Uh, $10 super what? chat, thank you oh, so much. Oh man, we're gonna be able said, to get home. Yay, he said, uh, you made me just pour my Glenfiddich. Oh effects. yes. Oh, hey, drink, drink it with us, absolutely. If you got Project XX, have a sip right now. Um, Doug, are you are you just cracking it for the first time? Yeah. Um, Killer Joel asks if uh, XX isn't the age, is no. it? No, it's, it's more along, I think it's, they had 20, 20, 20 mines, one X, mines. 20 mines, one monkeys have mines. <laughs> <laughs> great, great observation. Yeah, that's true. 20 mines, one unexpected whiskey. I think the idea is that monkeys <laughs> typing at a hundred typewriters would make an epic. <laughs> 20 monkeys chose casks and Gun Finnick <laughs> poured them into this. <laughs> it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. <laughs> oh my uh, god! Fuck. Okay. Um, Doug Crystal uh, says I'm halfway down in this. So yeah. Okay. So he he knows it a little bit better. We opened this last night. It's but we had the band here, so the band fucking tuned on it a little bit too. So um, wasn't just us, but we have had a few tastes of it, and it is like. Uh, I kind of called it like it's like Glenfiddich 12 on steroids a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah. pumped up. Like it's definitely Glenfiddich through and through, but it's. Uh, I never know how to pronounce this name, so I'm GH Civil 2 or something. It says it's one X short of being good porn. Yeah, yeah. Sure. For now, it's just a good pour. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well done. Witty. Thank you. Still have some wit left in there. <laughs> a little bit. 
It was 20 brand ambassadors, apparently. Oh, God. Wow. That's <laughs> like, what do they know? Swami did a video. Swami did a live video where he was talking about brand ambassadors. It was a live stream like a few weeks ago, and he was like, brand ambassadors are here for one thing. That's to suck my dick. Because <laughs> he was like, because he works at the bar, and yeah. he basically like, they're salesmen, is yeah. what he was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, but, and I might be misquoting him. He might not have said suck my dick, but it was something along those lines, like kiss my ass or whatever. And he was basically, he was implying that brand ambassadors are nobodies in the whiskey world. They're salesmen. They're trying to push a product and he is the client. So like they, they went to like go extra. They're going to do yeah. whatever he wants kind of thing, which is like, he has an interesting point. He obviously says it in a, <coughs> in a swami like way. Right, you know, um, but the way I I found very swami, yeah, I found the video to be quite amusing. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I don't have any beef with with brand ambassadors. Brand ambassadors do not hunt us down by any oh, means. They no, don't no, come no. trying to peddle their wares to us. You know what? We've, um, we've been to a couple of whiskey fests, mm -hmm. and the brand ambassadors can either be like a wealth of knowledge, mm -hmm. or they know fucking nothing. Yeah. And it's really weird because, like, we went to one at the Couch and Valley Whiskey Festival where we recognized the guy from the year previous, but he was now um, he an ambassador for a different company. Yeah, he had flipped sides. He had flipped sides, and that's right. And he didn't really know much about his product, and we had to. We were telling him. We had to tell him about the um, bullet. Bullet. Uh, what's the name of that company? The MGP. Yeah, the we're like oh. producers. That's the bullet rye with the MGP. And he was like, sorry, what? I'm like, well, MGP makes the actual rye that goes into the bullet. And he was like, okay, okay. And we're like, okay, okay. Well, see you later. We'll, we'll have some bullet rye and see you later. Yeah. But, I mean, nice enough guy. He, just, he, oh, needed, totally, totally. he needed to do his research before he went to a whiskey But I think fest. if you're going to be an ambassador, like, maybe ambassador is, like, the wrong title, you know? Yeah, it's like, like, that's a little bit, uh... Well, ambassador just really means that you're, you know, you're a promoter. Like, what's that make us? Like, emperors? <laughs> you know? No, we're, like, the, uh... We're the jesters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. whiskey jesters. Yeah, yeah. It's true. No, yeah, yeah, that's just it. Is like, but, but we're impartial. Like, we don't really care. Like, if if it sucks, we say it sucks. And yeah. a whiskey ambassador's job is to like shamelessly, oh yeah, Same. promote shamefully promote the product to their death, regardless of how shitty. Oh man, it is. we just did some Indian whiskeys, and like, I just feel bad for those ambassadors having to push some of those products. Well, and we ran into the ambassador of, um, or maybe the previous ambassador of Royal Challenge. Yeah. And they were like, hey, we saw your video about Royal Challenge. And we're like, what? And they're like, you really said a lot of not nice things about it. And we're like, well, it's not very good. And they're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's not. Well, what do you, what, yeah, what do you, what do you want us but to the, do here? The other thing is, like, the fact that they found a video. Yeah, they actually watched our video. Because there was no other videos about yeah. the challenge, yeah. right? So it kind of uh, shows where what the level's at. And and the other thing is they might have researched the video looking for information on how to sell it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? they're not going to find it from us. That yeah. shit sucks. No, but, I mean, the reality is... Indian whiskey blends, now that we really know them, because mm -hmm. we really do, we've gotten to know whiskey, uh, Indian whiskey blends, is like, For they're sure. on a different level. They're on their own level, like, as far as India. Not necessarily like a high level. No, they're, uh, they're on their own level. Yeah. Um, and it's like, you got to consider like their market and where they're selling it and how much they're selling it for and like who they're promoting it to and like what they're trying to do is like, they're really just aiming for mass consumption at the cheapest. But so, the, so once you once you take it to North America and you're comparing it to cask, you know, double X, it's it doesn't hold up, right? So one thing that's interesting though is like a lot of those blends from India are only sold exports. You yeah, know, they're like, export only. So it's it's kind of like, like well, they don't even give them the like, and maybe because it's like when you think about rupees, like it's like. 40 rupees for one dollar kind of thing like the exchange rate is so high like there's probably very few people that can afford um like an am root single malt in india yeah because like yeah, yeah. it would be the equivalent of like like how many people here are buying 500 bottles of 
yeah. of whiskey. It'd be like it'd be like every bottle of Paul John and, and Amrud is like five six hundred dollars to them. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like it's just exactly. it's just a lot of money. So it's better they've got a better market exporting. Um, one thing I'm gonna say that's negative about this uh, Glenfiddich looks terrible on camera. Yeah, yeah it's too dark. See. It's just so like it's like put it in front of your white shirt. There you go. But still, maybe up close is a little better. I don't know. It's just really dark. But, you know, we can't hold that against it. No, no. It's all about what's in the glass. Um, let's see what we got here. I want to buy the last challenge coin you have from batch one, even though it's been used and a little beat up. Okay, uh, well, here's a story so behind that. So that's your, your challenge coin that you shit kicked in. I, I used it to open beer the whole time I was in Indonesia. No. And the story with that is I met this Japanese girl on the, the last day of my trip. Oh, she's very attractive. Okay. Anyways, okay. Um, and mm. her, tell? I was hanging out with her. Yeah. We started drinking beer at 9.30 in the morning, and we didn't have a bottle opener, so I brought that out. Right. Kind of, we ended up talking about training and see a little bit. No. She started live streaming or whatever, like uh, chatting with her friend back home who was drinking a bottle of mm -hmm. Suntory brand whiskey. Okay. And like, oh, you guys like whiskey? Like, yeah, we love whiskey. Mm -hmm. So I ended up giving her that challenge coin to bring back to Japan. Oh. In hopes that maybe she kind of that spreads. That we would blow up in Japan. Yeah, spreads the Training and see is going to be huge in Japan. Yeah. Um, so Loch Ness, we do not have any coins left. I thought that there was like four or five coins that might have gone missing in my truck somewhere, like under the seat or behind the seat or something like that. If that turns out to be the case, <clears throat> we'll get you a old batch one coin. But um, we've had a lot of interest in the batch one coins. Uh, they were limited to 100. They sold out. It took a while for them to sell out, but uh, it seems like now that they're gone, there's been more interest in the batch one coins. But we don't have any mm -hmm. um, update on the batch. Update on the batch two coins, though. The metal uh, bottle opener coins is that I do have the tracking number and the most recent tracking number for the coins. The the, the shipment was that they were uh, going through the border and in, uh, in Vancouver. So. Hopefully the border does not hold up our coins for very Keep long. Talking. I'm gonna actually go uh go my house. Oh, oh, God. oh, God. oh, God. oh God. that's broken. Oh it's just marks. Oh good. He sent us, he sent us two. He sent us two. So we have a backup of his. Um Yeah, so our our new coins uh should be here momentarily. We've got had about I don't know, quite a few pre orders on the new coins. Um, so all those people that pre-ordered, as soon as they come in, I'm going to be <laughs> mailing them out, um, turbo. I mean, it's a lot of envelopes to fill out, but I'll be, uh, I'll be getting them out right away. So, um, that's exciting. I can't wait to unbox those. I'll do, I'll, as soon as that, uh, package comes in, I will unbox that package and I'll do it in a video. I'll dump those coins out and make it rain. It'll be uh, it'll be fun. So then everybody can get a look at them. But uh, they, I unexpectedly, like I wouldn't have taken pre-orders when I did, in, but I found out later that it was took takes four weeks to produce the um, the metal coins that we got. So, uh, but they fit. They're the exact same size as the old coins, so they fit like a whiskey hat kind of thing. But they're metal and they have a little opening in them because they're bottle openers too. So. They don't make the best whiskey hats, but they do still fit. They conform with the the usual um, shapes that everybody else's coins are in. Um, they're just really cool because they are also bottle openers, and we are we're beer guys. We like beer and whiskey, so you gotta have a bottle opener around. Um, but those are also limited to one hundred. So if you want one of those coins, don't come late to the party and uh, trying to trying to scoop one of those later because uh, when they go, they're gonna be gone. So. Oh, so it sucked in so hard in my life. <laughs> so anyway, we're just having a little coin conversation there. Oh, yeah. We have 51 people watching. Holy shnikes. It's Kentucky Derby night. Spoiler alert. Guess who won the Kentucky Derby? No, I have no idea. I no, watch it. Yeah, it doesn't, guy doesn't have cable. I, I said, let's cable. put the Kentucky Derby on. We'll take some Instagram pictures in front of the TV, holding some bourbon. Woo! Oh, you don't have cable. Okay. Um, you gotta yeah, cut, what's the point of cable? You gotta cut, cut well, football, football, but it's I just have the zone. 
Right, you had to zone. You can watch so all the games. So. Um, so, spoiler alert, put it in the comments. Who won the Kentucky Derby? Does anyone care? Did anyone watch the Kentucky Derby? Is I mean, that something that's really big amongst whiskey people? Or is it just because Kentuckians? Or is it just because it's Kentucky, so it's bourbon, and it's brought to you by Woodford Reserve, which or, is obviously... Or is it just the large hat-wearing crowd? Might be the large the hat-wearing fancy, crowd. Yeah. The fancy hat-wearing crowd. I, I remember it. years ago uh, when we were on tour playing music in this band called Listening Party, we had um, a, a thing of Trivial Pursuit with us. Right. And it kind of, kind of became like a running joke that every answer was going to be the Kentucky Derby. So okay. It's just like what it ended up being. Every single thing is like without like fail. Kentucky Derby. Oh, okay, well, who knew that? So you did you do a show in Kentucky? We did. A where in Kentucky did you do uh, a show? Ah, shit. It was actually at, it was really, really close to the Cincinnati Bridge. So like right next to Ohio. And um, we played a show at this, and I wish I could remember the name of it now, but it was a house but it was turned into a big venue that held like a good thousand people at mm. least. And upstairs there was like folk bands playing, okay. you know, you could drink coffee and whatever, mm -hmm. or I guess probably bourbon. And then downstairs, which is where we were playing in the big hall, um, this house belonged to the person who invented the Tommy gun. Okay. That's so cool. that's, that was kind of the fun fact, the, I, I don't remember the name of it. And I think it was called like Lex. Tommy? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, obviously. but <laughs> John the Tommy. Of, the name of the venue. Yeah. I cannot remember. John Tommy's house. Yeah. Um, And you opened for what band? A uh, band called Wolf Parade. Wolf Parade. Are you and familiar they were, with Wolf Parade? And Wolf Parade were re doing relatively well in the States because we got to play at like the Chicago House of Blues and the Fillmore in San Francisco and like the Bowery Ballroom in New York and all these like really uh, venues that you dream of. You like know? legit. Like legit. Um, like music places, yeah. not not just like cafes and shit. No, oh yeah, they're legit. Uh, and it was just cool because Wolf Parade at the time were like kind of getting to the peak of their career. In they their first album was their biggest. Mm -hmm. Their second was um, maybe criticized a little bit mm -hmm. because it wasn't their first album. So it's hard to have a sophomore album. Yeah, exactly. Especially when your first one's huge. Mm -hmm. But it was really good. So we were touring with them on their second album, and it was a lot of fun. The funny thing is that they had a tour bus and you guys were like in a car, like fucking trying to figure out what hotel. To no, stay but that's, that, was, that was the best part because <laughs> they took all of our gear. We didn't have to deal with anything. We just got in a car. We just chucked it on the bus. Yeah. That's fucking that's funny. Great. Great. It's funny because like, they're like, well, we've got all our shit figured out. Good luck, guys. Hope yeah, you make yeah, it yeah. to the next fucking Well, they got to sleep when they were like traveling. We yeah, you like, guys are like trading shifts driving. We didn't have Google Maps. So we oh, just had yeah. like maps. Like, okay. What uh, year is this? This was 2008. 2008. Yeah. You were quite big in 2008. 2008, you. 2009, yeah. That was my big year. <laughs> Trenny's big year. Trenny's big year, 2008. Good times. Let's let's go to the comments. There's been a lot of comments coming through. He has the thousand yard stare go in. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like, give a shit. Oh, sounds like, oh, like yeah. fun. Yeah, 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 who cares, Trenny? Um, Donner Pass Whiskey, hey, welcome to the show. Um, Jim G. Uh, welcome, welcome to the Jim show, G. Gary Track Trackalo. Yeah. Gary Trackalo, sure. Gary Trackalo, um, welcome to the show. Donner Pass Whiskey says the winner was disqualified. Don't know who won. Disqualified for what? Was the horse? Did it drunk? Jump? Too many drugs? Oh yeah, P yeah. PEDs. Did you shoot it up horse tranquilizers? Horse tranquilizers, <laughs> or as they call it, ketamine. tranquilizers or ketamine. <laughs> Um, neck pour is here. I love that name. Oh, that's, that's a great, a great handle. Uh, okay. Let's see who else. Cat is. piss lover is up. Cat piss lover. <laughs> Kenneth Kennelty. Kenneth Kennelty. Kenneth Kennelty. That's great. Kenneth it's like Kennelty. a penalty. Uh, okay. It's like a penalty at the dog pound. <laughs> Kennelty? Yeah. Um... Molten Montreal, did you get some nookie? He might have been talking about you and the Japanese um, coin girl. You don't have to say. Molten Montreal, Sarah Jessica Parker won. Horse face. <laughs> okay. Horse face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. Uh, 65 to 1 1. I don't know if that. It's like an oxymoron. We, we sure do not know our uh, Kentucky we, Derby stats. We don't know our horse names. No. 
Uh, <laughs> Always comes in last. Came in first. Somebody's whiskey ace says Thompson House. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, it's a Tommy think, gun. Thompson. I think House. so. Yeah, whiskey ace. I feel like it has another name to it too, though. So you played at the Thompson House. I guess so. I feel like the venue is called. What, what's the okay? Who said that? Uh, whiskey ace. Whiskey ace. What town is that in? <laughs> then I would definitely recognize. Do you have the Google? Oh, Whiskey Ace says, Trinity, did you play at Southgate in Newport, Kentucky? We did. Is that the one? Or is that a different That one? must have been it. Southgate in Newport, Kentucky. There you go. Yeah. That's fun. Cool. Yeah, Newport. Yeah. And it was right beside, you can see the Cincinnati Bridge. And yeah, it's cool. Doug Chris Hope said, I was at a horse racetrack today for New Orleans Jazz Fest, but never got around to the Kentucky Derby news. So, so a lot of us waiting for results from the Kentucky Derby. So many of us. Uh, Dr. David Ragland. Uh, oh, doctor, we have a doctor the other doc we have the, a doctor in the house. The other Dr. D. Yeah. Um, I like Woodford whiskey, but horse racing is as interesting to me as watching paint dry. Um, well, there's yeah, some we're good color paints out there too. There's some lovely yeah. paint. Um, yeah, I think the Kentucky Derby is kind of like a niche event. Like it's like it's there's a million horse races happening at any given time that no one cares about, but yeah. then the Kentucky Derby is like it's something that people don't even know anything about horse racing, just kind of watch. Yeah, it's it's, it's like an event to be there to it's be like, seen. It's like the FIFA World Cup to Americans. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, every four years, like yeah, I'll give a shit. Ah, soccer, the yeah. soccer cup. Yeah. What do we got here? And by by the way, I don't just mean Americans, but like Canadians too. Um, Anchor Mohan is like, hey, can you fucking give us some notes from the double X here? Like, what's going on? Approve or disapprove? Uh, well, okay, so it's a hundred and fifteen dollar uh -huh. bottle here. Yes. Okay, so you have we have to gauge it as that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I personally think, how much is regular Glenfiddich here? Glenfiddich is about fifty three dollars, fifty five dollars okay. pre tax for the twelve year old. Yeah, but so, so this is about double that. Yeah, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm not thinking that it's double the flavor or double the fun. Right. Um, but <laughs> it is very nice. It is nice. It is good. Uh, it has a lot of those kind of like green apple fig right. pear um, caramel things going on so that, that you get out of Glenfiddich's. But it's I'm, not. In my mind, it's not worth one hundred and fifty dollars. So $15. some things that are the exact same price: uh, Booker's Little Book Chapter Two, amazingly delicious. Um, tax is in Lot Forty Cast Strengths is the same price. Sure, but let's think about scotches too for that price. Like right. some scotch is just so ridiculously expensive, right? But you are getting okay. Here's an example: Le, Le Chegg, ten year old, yeah, age statement. Yeah, forty something percent. something percent. Yeah, um, non chill filter, non chill filter, no natural color. color. Yeah, um, that's about sixty five dollars a bottle. Yeah, and that's unreal. And it's in my mind heads and tails about this one. Um, so you can get really really good stuff for cheaper prices. Glenfiddich, I do think, however, put out a good product, and they've kind of gone up and down over the years. They're currently but on an upswing. I think they're on an upswing right now, and at least they're releasing <laughs> some interesting things. Whiskey Ace says, is this no age statement? It is no age statement because they had 20 different barrels apparently put in here. So there's probably some younger and some older. So yeah, they don't want to go and have to put the youngest age on it. Probably. For sure. But I mean, that's the same as like Solera and the Solera vat is 15. Oh, it is 15. It is 15. Yeah. Okay. So they're yeah. basically the youngest yeah. thing in there is 15. So if they're not willing to put an age statement on here, you got to presume that there is some probably younger, younger things stuff. Yeah. And it is good, but um, I don't know that I would personally, now that I've tried it, go out and uh, purchase it. If it was about $25 less a bottle, maybe. I like this. Bruce Ross, I like whiskey that's got some stank on it. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> we all do. We like aged in cardboard box. Oh, yeah. That's, that's that musty stank. stank. <laughs> Mm. That's got some stank that's, on it. That's, Jesus. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, Maybe will be deleted. <laughs> Sorry. You're talking about the two finger pour. Yeah, it's, you got two <laughs> fingers that you got to measure up to. That's a stanky pour. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, It's nine o'clock. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's getting it's an half an hour longer what than we intended. What time does the shuttle go? I don't know, but how long does the food go? Yeah. Oh, the shuttle. Remember last night? We were like, oh, those at eight. And, and he then said, he's like, oh, he'll you know, pick you up at any time. Yeah, like, do we have his number to call him? Do no. you know who he is? <laughs> I know his name. We no. just called oh, there actually, and asked you know him. what? He did text me a while back when I sent oh. a friend home. Oh, nice. So I might be able to find him. We might still be able to eat. Um, it's 9 o'clock here. It is. <laughs> Neckpour says, delete nothing. <laughs> Alan Hunt, calling Food Quig. <laughs> Food Quig can't save you this time. He won't have this on his channel. Oh, we haven't talked to it. Andy in a while. Yeah, he, he did his Scotland trip. He did his big tour. Like, yeah, he did, big, awesome he, he did a bunch of uh, videos and stuff. Check out Food Quig's channel if you don't know who he is. Uh, 51 watching. How are we going to drop this video when we have 51 people? Oh, it looks like probably our biggest biggest one yet. Let's just keep going. We could just keep going. Let's just like, keep we going for a little bit. We can oh, 50 dead. people. Well, we might have to stop now. <laughs> um, anyway, well, maybe we should move on to another whiskey then since... Well, you got your... You're going to crush that. If you guys want to see... C crush this whiskey. Wow. Then just watch just this. Watch this. Who cares? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Whoa! Now he's flipping out. I'm bare faced. <laughs> too much bare, bare face tonight. Um, out. We have no clean glasses. No clean glasses. No clean glassware. Uh, Eric Gilbert says it's twelve oh three here, boys. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> Only nine a.m. Wusses. Well, it's not that we're like... 9 p.m. 9 p.m., yeah. Um, it's more that we haven't eaten in a while. Yeah, and food in I would love hours. to crush a good juicy burger. Crush um, a burger and a couple of brews. Anchor Mohan, who I have not heard of yet. Have we? Yeah, we've been talking about Anchor tonight. Oh, tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight, yes. But he says, you guys are original. Hats off. Thank we're you. Just doing what we it's do. amazing. Thank you. This is just what we do. What are we gonna drink next, though? Um, triple caps. Is, so is that C? I don't get it. Oh, um, Eric Gilbert says time for a cask strength. Oh, Christ. Oh, okay. I didn't finish the sentence. So is that C's place? No, this is my place here. Our usual place is my place. Usually, when we have the uh, training C sign in the background and the plaid chairs. Yeah. That is C's place. This is mine. Um, I would love to give you a tour, but... You talk about the garbage in my garage. Your whole house is fucking mess. Oh, my place is disgusting right now. <laughs> Mark Lo Lovell says, watching this with a Lafroy triple wood. Oh, there you go. Mark, how do you feel about the triple wood? I've always been kind of reluctant to try it because... Sometimes, not always, but sometimes those uh, uh, Lafroigs with no age statement aren't great besides mm. the quarter cast, which is amazingly good. Um, right. here, here, I have some whiskey in this cupboard too. That we can check out here. I'm going to the cupboard. I think most of them are empty, but. Let's do the, you know what? This No, this is the one that, that keeps, it needs attention. And you just, just can't, can't get it's gonna be it's like Ron, it's the Rodney Dangerfield of whiskeys. It can't get no respect. <laughs> okay, let's try this. This is so good. This is so good, actually. Like you people, want scotch? You want scotch? Here's some scotch. What is in the pick box, Trenny? Pick box. Oh, this one? This the pick box? They can't see it though. Oh. Oh. This was like a gift from some, a friend. That made this whiskey box for us and it had like a flask and some whiskey stones in it which was very kind of kind of him and uh cool little box but i don't know if that's what they're talking about pick box what's a pick box you know what we got here we got a bunch of oh pink box, pink box. oh over there Be besides see so my oh, no. mom uh when she was a, a kid that's where she would keep all of her vinyl uh 45s here pass it there's actually some cool 45s in there. So this is like straight from the, the early 60s. This is all, a lot of her 45s and a lot of my 45s mixed in here. So look at this, we got 
Toto Africa oh, single with the B side. Rosanna, Rosanna. What a, what a wicked record that is. It's no hold the line. No, but what an awesome B side. We got some Fleetwood Mac with Sarah. Classic. Lots of stuff. Actually, my favorite one is just under the blue book there. Let me move this extra sharp one. So this this guy here oh, there you go. is the Nirvana Silver and Dive single released by Sub Pop and uh, actually it's probably released by Geffen. No, it's Sub Pop. So this is uh, before Nevermind came out. This was uh, ended up being promoted on the Incesticide record, but very cool little 45. Also, what's kind of cool about this one is the very end of, I think, side A, maybe it's side B, is um, Chris Novoselic's drunk phone call to Jonathan Poneman from Sub Pop Records, basically telling them he's an asshole and that they should sign his band. <laughs> he's like shit face, like, fuck, you just sign us. We're so good. Fuck you. <laughs> that's totally us. Anyway, so that's kind of cool. Nirvana's just like us. <laughs> We have less heroin in our lives, but that's true. But some cool ones. We got uh, The Who, Call Me Lightning, and Dr. Jekyll. Lots lots of good singles up in here. Stevie Wonder, Higher Ground. I've got some Beatles ones here uh, released by Apple Records. So look at this one. This is actually kind of right around the time that John Lennon kind of went nuts with Yoko. Mm. And this is the uh, Give Peace a Chance and Remember Love Plastic Ono Band. But we all know Give Peace From a Chance. Apple Records? Yeah. Look at that. Well, because Apple was the name of their record label before Steve Jobs stole the name. Anyway, some cool stuff here. That, that's a topic for another time. Oh, that's fun. That's, that's, Great, that's whiskey and music. But this here is uh, uh, early carrying case that my mom would take to uh, her like friends' house friends' and houses, and they'd have the like albums. the little it's fucking cool, like portable record players. Yeah. Well, we've got something smaller than forty fives here. <laughs> we've got some challenge coins. We've got Eric Waits metal metallic coin. Talk about metallic uh coin. Uh, we have All Souls Whiskey. Uh, we've got the Scotch for Dummies coin here. This one is the In My Wheelhouse coin. And we have the Scotch Test Dummies coin here. Coin number 462. How many fucking coins do you guys have? Holy shit. Um, and then we have Vin's No Nonsense Whiskey, uh, coin number 213. Holy shit, these guys make a lot of coins. Let me uh, just say one thing. George Wagner says, my wife and I are drinking Red Wrestle Stow after watching you guys uh, and Red watching Stone. you guys after watching the Red Breast Blind Tasting show. Yeah, that's, that's, cool. a, that's a good video, actually, our blind tasting of, uh, of Red Breast. And you know what? Le Stow is good, but it's, it's so dramatically different than the rest of the Red Breast lineup just because it has, in my opinion... It has that um, petroleum plasticky kind of thing um, that, of course, no other red breast uh, has. So it's it's an interesting one. It's grown on me. It's grown on me, but I didn't love it. I don't think at the time. Anyway, we're gonna drink the Springbank here. How did you get old souls? They sent it to us. I don't know. <laughs> I think we traded with him. Oh, must have traded. He's on Instagram. I think he's exclusively on Instagram. So what we're drinking here is the one bottle. We've drank this before on live stream, but, and we also have a review for it from when we first got going and it has like no views on it. So if you want to find out about this bottle and you want to watch a terrible vintage trendy and see, go and look it up on our channel. This is the Springbank Calvados wood cask single malt. Six years in Calvados wood and six years in bourbon casks. Yes. Uh, 52.7% per alcohol. Bought April 2000. It was uh, put into Still. a cask and then bottled on October 2012. So I've personally had 9, this bottle. 9,400 bottles. I've personally had this bottle since 2013. Yeah. It was the bottle 
like the one that you're allowed to bring back to Canada. So mm -hmm. that's the one I brought back to Canada from Scotland. And we did review it early, early days when we really didn't know any. Like I've watched some of our older videos and they're like gag worthy. Oh, terrible. They're fucking awful. Like I don't know how we got any subscribers. But not gag worthy is this guy right here. Oh. Oh, it, it's held its own so well because I think it's 52%. Mm -hmm. Yes, people are going to give me shit for not decanting it into a smaller bottle, but it just looks cool in the box. Cool. And it comes with a cool box, right? And so to like, be honest, like it's in a dark cabinet. It's always relatively like Yeah, it never cool. sees the light of day. Um, sure, it's getting oxidized a little bit more than it maybe it should, but Whiskey Ace says that sounds like a unicorn. It kind of is, probably at this point. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. Super uni. But Super very unique. big, like baked apple cinnamon. Um, the Calvados wood is really nice on there. It's like it's, it's that brandy kind of a, a flavor to it on the nose. <laughs> Doug Chriso, how do you retract messages? Some drunk night, I'm going to need that. <laughs> <laughs> you just delete. We'll just delete the whole video for you. Now there you go. That's what we do. We delete the whole fucking video, and then nobody will see it ever. These are Easter eggs. If you're here live, this one we might keep up. It's not so bad. We could. Like, how long have we been doing this, though? Like two hours almost? Uh, we've got a few other people. William Kyle. Welcome, I'm William. Sorry, how can you count that? 50 people. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, Gach Gachain, which I think is Mike. Um, Mike leaves huge, huge whiskey tasting notes in our oh, comments. Oh, yeah, section. I love like, that. That's like, great. Whiskey tasting notes that are like, you have to like scroll through the page. Like, he leaves thorough, legit whiskey tasting notes. We should he, almost say like, hey, this is the whiskey we're doing next. Can you just do the notes for us? And we'll yeah, and just email them to us <laughs> and we'll just say them. Um, he was one of the only few people that really took to our website. Um, yeah, the uh, scoremywhiskey.com, which is now defunct. Um, yeah, because then we discovered Whiskey Base. <laughs> yeah, we're like, well, there's, like, a, oh, there's a way better There's version. way better websites for this than ours. Um, but it was a kind of a fun undertaking at oh, the time. Great. Yeah, yeah. And our buddy Bill Mitchell gave us, he did a lot of work on that. We like, gave him nothing. We gave him a shirt. Oh, we gave him a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder he quit. Um, but yeah, he built that and it was fun. And uh, But the thing was then then uh, GoDaddy wanted wanted us to buck up oh, yeah, for that no, website. No, We're like, that. you know what? We can't pay two hundred dollars a year for this website that no one uses. So yeah, <clears throat> and we're actually in a uh, legal battle. No, it's not legal, but we're we're in a battle with GoDaddy right now about our regular website, Trinity.com. Are we? Yeah. Oh yeah, we are. It's defunct as well. Oh. We own we own the um the 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 address. We own Trinity.com, but we, there's nothing there. Yeah, because they won't post anything on it. Or we'll just go through a different I, freaking company. I tend to get into these situations. He did battles. I get into these. I have a, uh, a uh, yeah, I can be spiteful at times. Yeah. No. And, and, yeah. Well, anyway. Um, so, yeah, forget about trainingc.com for now. For now. We'll let you know when it's back up and running. But who goes to websites anyways? Yeah, like it, it would just redirect you to YouTube anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> We just don't want anyone else to have it. So yeah, yeah, we're perfect. just paying $100 a year so no one else can have trainingc.com. Um, anyway. Not that anyone would use Trenny and C. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, what's that? Anyways. Uh, what else do <laughs> we got going on here? Okay, I'm going to give some more notes on this nose because this thing is crazy because, yes, it's in a big open bottle. I've had it for, like, six years. Mm -hmm. Um and it keeps opening up on the nose, like every time I smell this thing. Like there's caramel apple in there now. There's like a little bit of like pumpkin pie spice in there. Moose 76, Clementine, lawyer in practice. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I like to write, I like to write opinionated letters to companies. And Should we have a set of my Sorry, sorry. I can go off on tangents, can't I? Mm. Mm. It's got that classic Springbank vibe to it, which to me is that like eff eff effervescent sizzle yeah. on the arrival. Like it comes in like, and it just has that nice um, heather honey, but also like in a bold, bigger way. Almost a little bit peated, but not like, not overpowering. It's not like an Isla peat or anything no, like that. No. It's kind of salty, a little bit. Um, uh, the briny thing. Briny and lemony. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but now with this caramel brandy, or it's caramel, apple brandy, quite nice. And it's got an age statement, and it's 52%. Good stuff. Mark Lovell. I'm not sure that I've seen that mm. name as well. I've um, seen it tonight. Have we seen it tonight? Mark yeah. Lovell says, I never judge a whiskey now until halfway through the bottle as it changes so much. And you know what? The thing is that that's why we do unboxing videos and then we do reviews later because yeah. we do an unboxing video on Saturdays because we want to give our initial first impressions yeah. and then we do a review once we've really gotten to know a bottle and it's like it's way down and it's had that chance to oxidize and develop and, and we get to know it. So here's a, a, thing have a with, moment. Here's the thing with that is that it rarely gets worse as it goes down, you know? So like yeah, there's true. times where I, my first impression isn't great and then halfway through the bottle I'm like, yes, this is actually pretty fucking good. But it's rarely like, oh, this is really good and then halfway through the bottle I'll be like, what happened to this thing? Yeah, for sure. For doesn't, sure. you, for myself, it doesn't work like Until that. it like, it could potentially happen at like this point. Yeah, and it goes it's cloudy. It's like, oh, it's gotten dull. Um, people are asking about the Bali trip. How was the Bali trip trendy? Moose 76. How was the Bali trip trendy? I Summarize it. 100 okay. or less. I love uh, that part of the world. I've been to Southeast Asia a few times. Bali is like one of 18,000 islands over there. So I checked out Bali. I checked out a place called Nusa Lombongan and Nusa Seningen and Lombok and Gilear. Sorry, what? <laughs> All these little islands, basically. Um, beautiful country. Really, really friendly people. The culture was incredible. Everyone's just like, you said they're very respectful, so respectful, and like I, I had my uh, my credit card hacked while I was over there, and on the last day, I told the receptionist of where I was staying, and he almost broke down into tears <laughs> because he was like, "No, like I'm so sorry. That's not what Balinese people are like," and blah blah blah. And I was like, "I know. No, no, I mean, it's I Russian hackers. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's like I know everyone I've experienced has been amazing." The food is incredible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the just like the women <laughs> are incredible, whether it's locals or travelers or whatever. Um, we love the lovely ladies of the world. Absolutely. Um, I, All women of the globe. It was my first trip. Just kidding, honey. My first trip solo traveling. Right. And uh, I was kind of nervous about that at first. But, I mean, I realized like half the time I lay on my couch being bored by myself anyways. So, sure. um it's not boring and I met way more people on this trip than I would have if I was with like a girlfriend or like a friend or something like that. So summary, Indonesia, amazing country. I would love to go back. In fact, uh, the, the dream is to sell everything. And you want to yeah. live there and vacation here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I basically just need like, insane super chats <laughs> yeah you know a trendy super well, yeah chat. it has to be like you'd have to do like the trendy bali channel yeah totally and then and just review like Cape, Bali Cape. whiskey or something. <laughs> yeah. well there's only one so oh we should do that right now sure we've already done it no one cared but was it um pj fan 173 says patreon confirmation just came through pj fan became a patron tonight thank oh, you cool. so much Congrats. he became a ten dollar patron which means that we're, gonna, we're gonna send him a coin that's so great. a coin automatically. So um, as soon as those coins are in, probably early next week, I will ship one out to you. Um, so thank you so much for yours and everyone's support. Even just watching this video is support, and we thank you for that. Everybody. Well, it's amazing that so many people actually tune in to watch these things because um, – still 45 people. It's after midnight, well after midnight on yeah. the East Coast. Yeah, that's great. So thank you, you guys, again. Like That's yeah. amazing. Um, let's get some drum Indonesian whiskey out. Okay. Well, what I think it's over here. And I got one right here, too. Okay. But that one's, I had, you've had sips of it, right? This was mine. We'll, we'll just say, we'll just say this one. Um, and we can, maybe we should finish our spring bank first before we start pouring some drum. With, we're going from, like, the really top good. of the line to the bottom of the line. Yeah, it's funny because drum, I mean, it's not amazing by any means, but there's definitely worse, I think. I tasted it last night, and um, I thought it was like respectable. Like it was, it was tropical climate kind of whiskey, which is which is tropical in flavors and and kind of interesting. But it has its very own oh, tasty notes. Mark Lavelle is horse, maybe. My name Luning. is Luning Horst. Luning. Uh -huh. What? Mark Lavelle. Where is the it? Chuck is horse. I don't know. <laughs> 
Horst is the guy from that um, from the other whiskey channel. So yeah, I don't know if Mark is Horst. Horst is Mark. I don't know. That sounds weird, but okay. Um, okay, we might not get to the bottom of that tonight. It's okay. We are, we might get to the bottom of this. Lou seventy six does say he loved the Bali video, so that's really cool. Thank you. Well, it was fun, kind of like it's like on location, but from a different place, right? Like, and then yeah, it was a funny because like as soon as we would start doing a video from Bali, like someone would show up and be like, "Hey, what do you got there?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you kept getting interrupted by people. Yeah, that one guy who came is like, "Oh, your your friend is at a bar." <laughs> like, well, kind of. Whiskey Sneerson just gave us a fifteen dollars super chat. Mm. That's awesome! Thank you so Whoa, much. Thank you so much. We are gonna be able to. That's like a Craig Street burger. <laughs> That's a Craig Street burger right there. We're gonna we're gonna eat tonight. I'm going to do something sacrilegious here, and add a, just a dribble, hopefully, of water to this spring bank. There Too much. Go. Take it back. There we go. I'll have mine. Eat. Um, and Whiskey Sneerson says, "Good live, guys." Thank you. Um, we aim, you know, like we aim to entertain and to, to have a good time with you guys. But you know what? Like you guys are having your own good time in the comments. Oh, yeah. Section. Some of the comments are like way better. You know? And you know what? I'm sorry if we miss some of them. It's, it's hard to keep up with them when you have 50 people on the go here. But you guys kind of have your own thing going on in the comments. And I know because I go on other people's channels and I go in the comment section. And sometimes you're only half paying attention to the person yeah, yeah. who's actually doing the video and what they're talking about because there's so much good shit happening in the comment section. Totally. And you're replying to somebody that sent a message to you and then they're exactly. replying that you're waiting for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you can kind of get distracted and you're like, well, you really are just giving people a vehicle to communicate with each other. You know One I mean? thing about the spring bank is adding a couple drops of water, it start, it's starting to get cl uh, cloudy in the glass right. and Boy, does it bring out the caramel. Like it's, it like thickened and sweetened it up. Even well, you like, added a liter of water, so <laughs> it's like five drops. People. It's like half a teaspoon. Mm. Neat. Mm. It has a bit of a, like a lemon zest to it. Yeah, it does. You know, but that's so good. Okay. Uh, Eric Gilbert says Lamburger, baby. Lamb yeah, maybe we can get the Lamburger. I don't know if they have a Lamburger there. It um, might. It'd probably be good anything if there's good. What time's that place open till? Like, I think midnight, but who knows? I think the kitchen closes at like 10. We have to call them. <laughs> Otherwise, can, can we still order a pizza this time of night? <laughs> or are we looking through your freezer selection at this point? Roy's chats are mainly side chats. Do you know what? I'm going to actually, you keep the people entertained. I'm going to call the brew yeah, pub sure. and uh, see if he can pick us up. And if so, we're going to have to cut this off. Well, it'll take him 15 minutes to get here anyway. But So Roy, the thing about Roy's chats is that Roy gets like 130 freaking people, man. Like it's, it's hard. Like Roy does a really good job, honestly, kind of like, um, and he usually gets Jason Whiskey Wise to kind of like, commandeer what's going on and, and d provide direction of what's happening in the comment section. But um, it, when you get 130 people on the go in the comments, just pumping out comments, like that's hard to keep up with. And like I said, I mean, Roy does a pretty good job. He almost like seems to like bookmark where he left off and then give, you know, give props to everybody as he goes through and, and recognizes people. So I think Roy does a really bang up job for the, um, for the amount of traffic that comes through his channel. Like he's running a really good channel. He's just a really good dude. And um, you know, of, of all the people on uh Shadow's not running tonight, sir. We're running one last night and the food stops at 10. So So we might get we a cab. Should, we should get a cab like right now. I'm gonna call a cab right now. Yeah, so like um yeah, Roy does a really great job. So anyway, if you don't know about um Ac Vitae, you should check out his channel. I'm sure you probably do, um, but anyway, he's he's doing an awesome thing, and his his thing is mainly lives. Like we have 420 videos right now on our channel, 420 whiskey videos, some better than others. Uh, Roy has like I don't know 20 videos. I mean, outside of his live streams, and he has 
almost double the audience that we do. That just really speaks to the quality of the live stream that he's putting out there. Like he is just, and he's got his, um, he's got his uh, quiz at the end and everything. So he's just having a lot of fun doing a cool thing. And uh, every channel has their own kind of um, style to it too. So that's the cool thing is that you can find you know, you can find your reviewers and the people that are, you know, doing the things that you like and the type of whiskey that you like. Like, that's one thing that kind of I think works against us is that we don't we don't focus on scotch or bourbon or one type of whiskey. We're like, we'll do a scotch and then we'll do a bourbon and then we'll do an Irish and then we'll do a Canadian and then we'll do a whatever. So we're kind of all over the place. And I think for people that um, that are really looking for for just scotch, they don't maybe spend as much time on our channel. And that's okay because, you know, you've got the other guys out there that are doing a lot more of that kind of stuff. So, you know, you've got your options for reviewers and there's some really, really great options out there. So just explore them all, check out all the channels and uh, and enjoy. Like, just have a good time. That's what it's all about. Cool. Nope, there you go. Oh, oh, oh come on. Oh, no, I got so good to get it right Okay, so coming? here's the thing. Cab's coming in 20 minutes. I called the brew pub. Yep. The kitchen's open to 11. Fantastic. Oh, we are golden. Um, Drinko Plinko. Mm. Drinko Plinko. Here's the thing. Drinko Plinko is one of our signature moves. We haven't done a Drinko Plinko in months. Normally what we do is we film multiple Drinko Plinkos in one night. Yes. We might have to film a shit ton. But what happens is um, the Drinko Plinko is at my place. We're filming like weeks worth of videos right now at your place. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next time, literally the next time we go to my house, Drinko Plinko, we're night. spamming Drinko Plinko. Oh, yeah. So we might do a Drinko Plinko live, but we are gonna come up with some fun Drinko Plinko ideas. We're in search, Drinko Plinko is the search for the perfect cocktail. Yes, of course. It's using yeah. a high tech machine that will select the different mixes that go into the cocktail. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a three round mix. That is it's a, like the first internet, kind of. Yeah, it's like early internet. Yeah. It's that version of like make, mixing cocktails. It's like so early, it's not even dial up. Yeah, it's before that. It's very manual. Yeah. So it's a whiskey round, a mix round, and a garnish round. Some people use science to like cure cancer and mm -hmm. like different things. We're doing it to find the perfect cocktail. This would be like going in the garden and looking for those herbs that mm. would make the cure. Sure. Right. Yeah, like yeah. The, like yeah. from that yeah, that perspective, nothing like that at all. No, no, it's, it's quite stupid. Um, but we have a lot of fun doing it, and sometimes you can watch us mix tuna fish with whiskey and drink it, and uh, get very few views doing it. So basically, people have a love hate relationship with Drinko Plinko. There's some there's some big fans out there, people that love Drinko Plinko, and there's some people that uh, find it just blasphemous that we would dare. Well, Drink. I think one time didn't we mix like, um, what's it called? The stuff that everyone goes nuts about, Pappy, like was, or something like that. We did like something really expensive, it's like, like Weller, probably with like egg white and <laughs> oh, egg white. Yeah. Uh, well, we did some tuna. Yeah, yeah. And I think some maybe oysters. some oysters. Yeah. We just smoked oysters with whiskey. Well, like when you think yeah, about you got that, and I got the sprite with uh, like. Yeah, lemon juice or something, juice or something like or something Coke like, Zero. That's pretty good. But when you think about it, like who would have come up with um, the Caesar? Right? It's like vodka mixed with that's pretty much juice like the tomatoes. That's like pretty much the first like drink of like Yeah, with yeah. asparagus in it and then like some like, horseradish. Ah, clam juice. That sounds good. We've got some clamato. We'll put it in the next drink of Plinko. That's right. You know, we actually have to come like drink of Plinko is a delicate balance between trying to find shock value items but also trying to find like actual truly mixable items well definitely Usually there's one real shit product in every round right yeah, yeah always yeah. inevitably lands on that one and uh lester fixins was kind of like the epitome of nothing's gonna be good yeah i was like this is hopeless yeah it's like oh lemon meringue maybe that might be okay it wasn't wasn't it was terrible yeah everything <laughs> was terrible <laughs> Um, I think what we should do is we should probably wrap this up relatively quickly here. Yeah, sad. Um, sad but true. I've had a great time. I had an excellent time. This went way longer than I was expecting. 
Oh, we did forget to drink the drum. Oh, so we, we have one last little time. thing, drum. Can you put this in the bottle? Let me just oh, slam this. Let me just slam this very rare spring bag. Yeah, crush it. Okay. This will be That's our, what you do, right? This will be our drink Plinko next. Yeah. With some clam juice. We'll, put, we'll offend some real connoisseurs with that. Yeah. We should do a round of drink Plinko that's only like two hundred plus dollar whiskeys. Yeah. And like yeah. only have different flavors of tuna yeah. to mix with. Yeah, yeah, like those uh, snack packs. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh, here's the dill tuna. Oh, oh lemon tuna. Spicy Thai uh, peanut. Okay. I just called Drinko Plinko Head Explosion Ground or something. Pretentious asshole. Okay, last uh, drink of the, the evening. <laughs> We're really downgrading here. This is... Degrading ourselves? This is drum whiskey from Indonesia. Um, Bali specifically. And I don't know that I am in love with it or anything like that, but it was at least interesting enough. No, you're not in love with it. No, it is. Okay, here we go. I can't. I was surprised though that you didn't buy the other version of drum because there was a I drum. I didn't see it. There was a drum green. Yeah, it was supposed to be the better stuff. This was the black label. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm actually smelling banana right now on this thing. Yeah, Donner I mean, Pass Whiskey said, I'd like to be the taxi driver. <laughs> the taxi ride will actually be kind of boring. It was way better when Food Quick was in there. Oh, because yeah, he, he was could talk shop. He was yeah. talk, <laughs> talking business with the taxi ride. How many beeps do you get when your seatbelt gets undone? Really? You really got to back up first before you do whatever. <laughs> you put it in reverse and then jam it into gear and pull your seatbelt out. The beeps won't happen. I'm like, holy shit. This guy knows how to yeah. manipulate seatbelt beeps. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> um, you're right, there is some tropical notes on this. Um, but the underlying thing, I think, is like this weird kind of like rice, soy sauce kind of thing. When you were talking about those like those rice crackers with like that weird soy sauce glaze yeah. on them. I was yeah, it's like, like sweet and salty kind of. But yeah, there is a but tropical it. It too. Is tropical. Like, but you're but right, it is it has a salty soy sauce thing going on. There is something like okay about it but at the same time like when all you've been doing is drinking bintang beer and you want like mm -hmm. like a bottle of maker's mark is like 180 dollars so you just want some good whiskey and then you find this for this is about seven dollars you started talking about maker's mark and how expensive it was there and i was like yeah, i might as well get a bottle then yeah, yeah. Like, you're in indonesia like dreaming of maker's mark so i was like yeah that's awesome. yeah i'll just get some so okay now on flavor should we move on to flavor, or do you have sure. more notes there? No, it's just um, it's definitely it's unique. So it's so odd, like it has a tropical notes, un unidentifiable notes for yeah. sure, and like it has that almost rummy kind of thing to it. You know, like I don't know if rummy is the right right way to put it, but it's like it's not like whiskey and sugary. Kind yeah. Of, yeah. Okay, let's, let's taste it. It's not as bad as I remember, actually. It's just weird. It's just different. It's weird. Again, like the final taste is kind of... I feel like in the last two months, we keep finding these whiskeys that we cannot compartmentalize into the usual um, locations where you go like, this is a corn whiskey. This is a weeded whiskey. Yeah. This is a such and such scotch. We just there's no there's nothing in your memory bank to associate it with. You can't be like, oh, this tastes like something I recognize. Like this is just it's, it's a whole another ballgame. And it's it's better than I remember. But also, I think when you're also traveling and stuff, your taste buds are in a different time zone, so to speak. Oh, sure. You know, like you're eating different food and your your influences on what your flavors are going to be are a bit different. Um, so this just seemed so like, it's not musty or anything. It's just kind of like, it's almost banana leaf kind of like It is banana thing. leaf. And, and I'm getting a little bit of like an, like an a apple, like almost like an apple, like Laffy Taffy. Like in the sure. way that Laffy Taffy is like kind of plasticky. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like, I don't know. But sweet too. Like this is a, this is quite a sweet whiskey. Mm -hmm. What do you not say? Very much. Beer image. 
Very much. There, there's like this thing on the end though that just reminds me of like rice. I don't know. There's something like wet, gluey about it or yeah. something. Like I don't know. Like it's it's very hard to um, identify and put your finger on everything that's going on here. There's some real some real interesting stuff happening. Yeah. So I think on that note, yes. Um, it's been a great night. It's been a great night. It's been a hashtag best Saturday ever. I think you guys should go from this party yep. to this party. Um, <laughs> nice after, segue. After, thank you. Thank you. After this show yep. and go to the YouTube channel of Listening Party. Show yep. people that shirt so they know what symbol. It um, looks like this. It's got the symbol of this dancing guy here. Yeah, that's kind of like the symbol as of the YouTube like. Uh, thumbnail or whatever. It's on the it's on the Facebook group. It's on the um, so it's on the Instagram. It's on the Twitter. It's this check out guy. listening party. If you can't find it right away, type in the word Pachina P A C H I N A. Yeah, listening party Pachina or two months in Langley. Yeah. Anyways, if you guys are having some drinks or some other listening, some tunes. Go have some and leave some, some comments like, "Hey, this music sucks." Or, you know, like, or that it's good. Say it's <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think about training and see our original goal is to get somebody to say that we suck. Yeah, I know. It's also a listening party should really have the same. Yeah, we have high goal. expectations. Anyway, okay. it's been fun. It's been, it's been awesome. Um, thank you to everyone who's given us super chats tonight. That awesome. will really get us a burger. <laughs> We're pumped about that. And a cab ride. And a cab ride. So thank you guys. Yeah, and cheers. We will. See you, what is it today? Oh, there'll be a video t uh, Monday. Monday. Yeah. A solo review solo from you. From me. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Good time.